You are now tuned in to the Ladies Love Hip Hop Podcast with your host, Summer Willow. Hello, hello, and welcome to the show. I'm your girl, Summer Willow, and this is the Ladies Love Hip Hop Podcast. I want to thank you for being a part of this journey with me. I love hip hop. I love exposing you to uh, new music, old music, catching a vibe, celebrating the culture. It's all about togetherness. It's all about love. Um, I'm excited about today. Uh, once again, you know, I bring hip hop interviews to my audience, you know, to have a, a general conversation and also to get kind of in depth with our, our guests and get to know them on a different level. Also to be exposed to their music and the things that make them tick. So today I am super excited. I have a great guest today. Um, this guest is a powerful hip hop artist, a sound designer and creator of natural perfumes. Hello. Her radical matriarchal legacy is to create awareness inspiration and social change throughout the entire world um my guest theater work includes marina calendars solo show mermaid's how caridad la bruja de la luz an adult comedy cabaret um the bruja ha and the migrant liberation movement suite with the afro yaki music collective she has worked with hip-hop pioneer lewis Break below Flores and is a core member of the Afro Yaqui. Am I saying that right? Music Afro Collective, Yaki. the ASCAP award winning multi. What do you say? You got it. You got it. I got it. I got it. Okay. So this is the multilingual jazz band. Um, my guest is featured, is a featured artist in Nona Hendrix's annual Rock Solid Women's Festival, celebrating women in art and music and Toshi Reagan's World Rock Sword, a festival exploration of women's lives. She collaborates with artists from La Bruja, who I love, to Napoleon the Legend, who I also love. And without further ado, of course, I'm speaking of Nejma Nefertiti. Welcome. Thank you so much. What an intro, yes. I mean, hey, <laughs> it's you all got about it. you. Got it. <laughs> yes. I try, I try to use my, you know, public school reading skills. <laughs> yeah, so, I'm so, so glad we finally made it here together. It's always a journey to the show, I'm telling you. I can tell you um, some of the stories are kind of funny. But <laughs> um, it's been a pleasure to watch you through, you know, the social media lens and to listen to your music. I'm a fan. And I felt like, hey, it's time to get to know this lady. I want to get to know you. Um, and I want everybody to speak your name like I do with high regard. So I think we need to hit it first where it counts. Tell everybody what Nejma Nefertiti means. Sure, yeah. Nejma Nefertiti is actually my given name. Um, I went by a lot of different names before. You know, um, for the longest, I went by La Unica the only one. I went by that for so long. Um, but eventually, you know, I realized that I had a name that I kind of needed to step into, but I wasn't ready for all that quite yet. But now I am, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So it's kind of like, you know, Nejma means in Arabic star, and it's a, mm -hmm. like a feminine, feminine form of a star. Um, mm -hmm. And Nefertiti is one of my middle names. I have two middle names, and that's one of them. So, you know, that was kind of my father's doing with all that but um it's a big <laughs> name to live up to you know and it also it also created a lot of curiosity in me as far as ancient egypt and all that kind of stuff and i do have ancestry from there so yeah so nesma nefertiti is something that i had to really be ready to step into and represent because you can't you can't you know you can't half-ass with that no name. you can't bear that name and you know not come with the power come with the word yes i had to which is what you do Thank you. Thank you. Well, so are you saying that at some point, I guess maybe early on in your career, um, you said you were La, La Unica? La Unica. I was Nejma Shea for a long time. So what was the vibe with you then? Where where was your headache? Um, like in the streets. 
<laughs> and I'm not saying I'm not saying it still it doesn't you know it's still not there because I'll never forget that like I come from the streets you know um, that's where I was introduced to hip hop you know long ago so like you know I, I definitely still have that flair but you know there was something there was something so divine about like Nejma Nefertiti and I didn't even think about it um, <laughs> until someone else said it and I was like it just you know, and even then I didn't do it right away. I said, ooh, you know, it had such a ring to it. I said, ooh, I gotta, I gotta be ready for that. And and I yeah. wanted to be honest with myself at the time, you know, um, and I didn't feel like, you know, like I was there yet, you know? So it took mm. me time to really like, to really embrace it. Absolutely. I mean, there's a lot of responsibility that comes with the messages that you bring forth. And I know that it's a coming of age thing. It's also, you know, a transformation thing. And just as women, we have a lot of insight and foresight and magic and powers, and we don't necessarily tap into them, you know, at certain ages while we're still figuring things out. But I can definitely see how, you know, bearing your, your given name and the power of your given name brings forth these lyrics because I can't hear you rapping about anything else, honestly. I don't know. I don't know what else you could talk about, but like all that you're into. So I did my research about you and you come from a place kind of you have that typical hip hop story um which a lot of times women in the industry aren't given the credit for you know having a story and mm -hmm. and and really speaking the truth when they're talking about their their street entanglements you know what i'm saying but right. you have a very interesting upbringing um Tell us about that. What was it like coming up, Najma? Yeah, um, well, I came up with my mother's struggles, you know, like that's who I was with. I didn't really have my father in my life, um, like many, you know. Um, he was he was deported and he's he's quite a mystery, so I ain't even gonna get into it. But um, you know, I feel his spirit with me though, and I, I definitely hold regard, you know. Mm -hmm. He gave me half my identity, obviously, but you know, um, my mother struggled in her childhood and therefore had a hard time in life, just bouncing back from a lot of things, you know? And I seen that, I seen her struggle. I seen her struggle with heroin addiction. I seen her struggle trying to make, you know, ends meet, trying to feed, mm -hmm. you know, her five children. Like, mm -hmm. you know, um, we have very little, so, you know, that was that was my world. And like, I'm an 80s baby, so I grew up in the era of hip hop crack and AIDS, you know what I mean? Yep. Which, which really shaped my mind differently than, than you know, later generations or generations before, you know, that was a, a very specific time. Um, mm -hmm. So, you know, we had a lot of hardship, you right. know? And honestly, like back then, I was just always kind of worried about my mother, worried if she was gonna come home, worried if I was, you know, gonna lose her. You know, and, and at the same time, she showed me everything, you know, um, she was a young mother and mm -hmm. a lot of the time she was, you know, more like my friend at that time. And she showed me everything. I mean, I seen everything in the streets. So there was nothing mm -hmm. left um, to wonder about. And therefore that really shaped me too, because yeah. you know, it's just like, yeah, seeing all that, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. it it's it made me who I am, you know? And, and it, it definitely, pre it prepared me for a lot of things that I had coming to me um, in life that, that I would have never really expected, you know, that I would have to endure or get through or come out the other side of, you know? So I'm, mm -hmm. I'm actually grateful for that. You know, I would never change anything in, in my past and all those things that we went through, you know, it, mm -hmm. it really did give me um, my character, my lyrics, you know, um, and yeah, it's 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 part of my story. So, you know, I respect it. Absolutely. And I know that, you know, you speak about it in your rhymes that you lost your mother mm, um, yes. a few mm -hmm. years ago. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And I felt that, um, not that I lost my mother, but just the idea of the connection to her spirit and to seeing yourself through her eyes and her experiences but then also 
kind of the turmoil that she experiences and how you're going to love her and her memory through that, but also kind of walk away from um, the things that you were raised with. Because, you know, we didn't we didn't ask to be here, so to speak, so to speak. And um, a lot of our experiences as children, you know, they just kind of happen to us and they shape us. Um, and I feel like you're taking some of the some of the greatest parts of your mother um, with you on this journey, on this hip hop journey, because you said she she introduced you to hip hop. Yeah, you're going to make me cry, girl. <laughs> no, nah, for real, for real. That's, I mean, I can feel her. I swear, I could feel her smiling at me right now. Like, it's a really mm -hmm. warm feeling, like the sunshine. Like, I could feel that. And I, I definitely, yes, yeah, she introduced me to hip hop, you know, mm -hmm. and um, she was always playing it. She was always playing the old school heads from the 80s. And, you know, then by the time the golden era, the 90s rolled around, I was in it. You know, oh, yeah. she introduced me to that, to hip hop, to house music. You know, okay. um, yes, yes, she loved all that stuff. And my mother spent a lot of time in and out of prison, you know, mm -hmm. so, um, and also institutions, rehabs. You know, mm -hmm. I, I spent a lot of time in foster care. I spent a lot of time living with um, other families that were the families of my good friends from school that would take me in. So I, I had a lot of, um, you know, I was like exposed to a lot of different cultures. You know what I mean? Um, Absolutely. Yes. So that really shaped me too, and my style for sure, for sure. If you have a unique, you have a unique style, um, both as an MC and just as a lady. I see you. Um, I see you on both sides of, um, you know, your originality and also the culture that you picked up. But um, t tell me about your style. Tell me, you know, what moves you? What what makes you tick? Um, I like music that makes me want to dance. I like, you know, I like I like culture. Period. I like to experience it. You know what I'm saying? Like, and just because again, I spent a lot of time with different people and their families. You know, I had a Dominican family. I had a Puerto Rican family. I had yeah. a Dominique family. Mm. You know, we, just, we I learned, you know, how to dance to Arabic music, salsa, merengue, you know, mm -hmm. all these kind of things like, like really opened my mind up and I ain't even like leave the hood yet. You know right. what I'm saying? I ain't even leave <laughs> right. the hood yet. You know, mm -hmm. and when I finally did, I, it also really opened me up and it and it and it changed my world. I would say I would say that too. Um, just traveling, you know what I'm saying. Um, mm -hmm. It really inspires the writing. It inspires my style. Like you know, yeah, I would just pick up little things here and there. But ultimately, I just do what makes me feel good, really, and and, mm -hmm. and you know, what makes me feel comfortable. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Because I, I would, you know, it wasn't always like that. You know what I mean? I had to struggle to kind of like. Um, it's not easy, you know, people are always saying, oh, be your authentic self. Sometimes people don't even know what that is. You don't know what that is, you gotta find that. You gotta find it. And then and then to be that is, mm -hmm. is a struggle in itself because you're gonna, you know, go against a lot of obstacles because of doing that. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And that's what I've been experiencing, you know, but I'm all good with it because as long as I'm free, that's what I care about. Like, I don't wanna be controlled. I don't wanna be told what to do, what to wear, what yeah. to put out. You know what I mean? So th those are the things that are really like important to me. Yo, I connect to that so much right now. This is a time. And I was saying to a few friends that this quarantine has been a blessing. Um, although, you know, we lost a lot of people um, and a lot of things have made a turn in a direction that we're not used to. And that for some is scary and has been devastating. But the peace of it all and the quietness has allowed me to be introspective and figure out what I really like and who I really am. And, you know, uh, one thing that I did come to grips with was that the voice in my head and how I tell myself most of the stuff I don't want to hear, most of the stuff I don't want to hear comes from me. Yeah, we do that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it's like hearing the contrast of my friend's voice and saying, hey, Summer, you know, you're powerful. Hey, Summer, you can do this. Hey, Summer, I believe in you. If anybody can do it, Summer can do it. And I'm sitting here, you know, bashing myself. So it definitely made me um, have a paradigm shift about 
who I am and who people told me that I was. Mm, and that's big, when that's you big. figure, yes, when you figure that out and you figure out that you're not living in your purpose because you don't really know what it is because you're listening to other people, mm. it makes you shut it out and shut them down. And it's going to hurt their feelings. And you know, they're gonna talk a smack about you or whatever. Yeah. But you know what? When you're convicted about it and when you're ready, it doesn't bother you. Exactly. And I see that in your face. You're like, you know. Yep, yep. I you know, I've gotten to that point and I'm I'm really happy to be here. Like I feel like it's a blessing and I feel really grateful because I didn't know, you know what I'm saying, that that would happen. What if I was still struggling with that for the rest of my life? You know what I'm Mm. saying? Like, this is like, it kind of gives me chills a little bit because, you know, it makes me feel unstoppable. Like, I don't care who opens the gate for me. I'm going to bust it down. You know what Mm. I'm saying? And like, I'm going to do it my way. And if, you know, people don't like it, it's cool. You know, people can respect it or not. But at least I'm being me and doing what I want to do. And I'm doing it for the love of hip hop. You know what I'm saying? And for that culture. You know, because Mm -hmm. this this is the culture that has brought me up, you know, and kept me alive, kept me striving and creating, you know, in different intervals and stuff from, you know, I can't went from the street corner to like teaching young people. Like it's Mm -hmm. crazy, you know, stepping up into colleges and doing, you know, big workshops and big huge plays at the Kennedy Center. Like who would thought? You are the personification of transformation oh that's beautiful i see that's it a good quote <laughs> take it it's yours, it. <laughs> it's yours. <laughs> but I, I just you know um i'm very i'm about the feels and i can just feel you know that we're we're aligned in a lot of ways when it comes to you know just how we see the journey and then how we attack the journey because it was so different like you said it was different if you were out on the corner that had been a different attack that's a different strategy yes um but then when you come to know who you are and understand that there's a lot of the story that you're not living or that you didn't tell yourself and that you need to embody and that you need to kind of embrace so you can empower yourself it just makes you walk different and when i was introduced to your music I was just like, well, who is this? How did you how did you find out about me? That's a, that's I'm curious. I think it was Napoleon. I okay. think he shared one of your um, videos or a song with you too. I can't remember, but it was a little while back. It was last year, early last year. Yeah, early last year. And your voice is so classic hip hop. Yeah. That I'm like, well, who is this, and how old is she? Because you come across, <laughs> yeah. you come across very mature in the game. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you, you know? know, I, I, you know, I feel like I'm an old soul. You know, I'm, in fact, I'm coming out with this new project, um, and I think, I think I'm gonna call it Seventeen Thousand Years because I feel like maybe that's mm. how many lifetimes I've lived. You know what I mean? Mm. Um, yeah, and I haven't come out with a solo project in a long time. Um, yeah, and shout out to Napoleon, man. We're working on a project too. Um, I've did, I've done a lot of collabs with him, and just his work ethic and and the person he is. I mean, he's doing exactly that. Like he's walking in his purpose. He's being authentic to who he is, and it's so inspiring, yeah. you know, to work with a person like that. He's and, so and, creative. And it's in like a timely manner too. Like he will not take like months and months and years to release what you did like I just mm-hmm. I can't I can't no more I can't be waiting that long <laughs> you know yeah, the waiting game is lame the it's waiting so lame. game is lame I mean like I've had so many disappointments um but yeah. later have found that those disappointments were actually my victories you know what I'm saying like it's it's yeah. it's yeah for real because you know it wasn't meant to be the way it was it was meant to be the way it actually happens and I learned to really trust that process you know and Absolutely. not get all like in a, in a bit you know not just get all like oh man you know this isn't working not nah, just take a deep breath and and mm-hmm. you know figure out how it's supposed to be because the universe may be telling you something else you know absolutely and that person that you were that you thought wasn't good enough or wasn't necessarily the right persona to have it was perfect at the time because yeah. it exposed yeah. you to some things that are going to benefit you and you can pull out your arsenal as you move 
into these different iterations of yourself. You know, right, right, you can, right, you can yeah. dig back into, you know, eighth grade and, you know, some stuff you were doing back then. You could dig back into some shady deal or some shady situation, you know, that you were in and how that felt and how that, yes. how, you, how you fix that. You know, it's just like life is a gift and the way you, it's the way you live it. Yeah, true. I mean, like you said, transformation, right? It's like, and, and it is a gift because all those experiences made me smarter for my business, for my, you know, for my craft. Like, you know, this is a craft, you know? And it's like, mm -hmm. just the way I do things and what to do and not to do. And now I can help younger people too, especially younger women. You know, when, they, mm -hmm. when they're asking me questions, I can answer those questions because I done been through that. And I can give them advice and maybe they'll take it or not, but at least I can be there for them as a voice. You know what I'm saying? Because I didn't really kind of like have that like it wasn't um or or just like that community you know what i mean mm -hmm. i learned a lot you know and and like the process of growing and transforming it's not really like pleasant like, like <laughs> no. most of the time like mm -mm. people that's why they don't do it it is not pleasant it's actually pretty painful when you're healing when you're transforming when you're evolving like but when you get out the other side it's so worth it speak so it you know what, I'm what do you typically talk to the young ladies about? What is the platform? Um, well, it depends what I'm doing, but usually, like, if it's a hip hop workshop, you know, mm. um, I'll introduce them to a little bit of, about what I do and who I am and share some of my work because then it opens them up. It's like, well, who the hell are you, lady? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Let me show you, and I, you know, I show them, I get them a little excited and curious, and then, you know, I ask them kind of like, I try to get to know them a bit, see what they're into, what kind of music they're liking, you know, what kind of, um, how, what they're, what they're creating or what they maybe are afraid to create, you know, they start to, you know, from, it's like a conversation at first, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I try to, I try to assess it from there and then, you know, um, sometimes we'll watch videos or do like um, even political development on certain type of music, you know, and ask them what they think of this, how this, you know, pertains to them in their life, um, mm -hmm. you know, what this sparks, you know, sometimes we'll do writing sessions or, you know, I might teach them um, even like about how to stand in front of a mic or even how to hold the mm -hmm. mic. Like some people don't even really know, Get you know, that. what they're doing, but everybody starts there you know what i'm saying yeah everybody starts there so it's just a non-judgmental kind of liberated space for them to be because they're yeah. always like you know it's like they don't get to really share themselves like that you know and i can <laughs> see that when we when we do it i can yeah. see how they begin to get like excited and once they start to share it's like it's that's open. it it's open that's it you know and i you love it i love know. doing it yeah it's so Absolutely. fulfilling I also um, mentor, coach, train young adults, and it is, oh, man, it's just a feeling that you get. It's not about a philanthropy or, you know, giving back in that sense. It's more so a sharing of yourself with people who, I mean, I know when I was coming up, my parents were divorced, but I had both of my parents you know, regardless. And I know that a lot of these young people, they don't have their parents at all. And, and and more importantly than that, like, you know, shouts out to the grandmoms and the uncles and the neighbors that looked out for you when your parents weren't around. So it's not really always about your parents, right. but they don't have somebody to tell them that they love them or ask right. them like, how was your day? Or what did you eat today? Exactly. Or how do you feel today? Or tell me a joke. Make me laugh. You know, it's just like somebody to genuinely just care about how they feel right here, right now. Yep, yep. And like you said, you know, a lot of the time when you have people caring for you, like a mother, uncle, anyone, you know, that's such hard work that by the end of the day, they might not ask them, how are you feeling? How, you know, what are you, you know, it's like, and, and it's because it's, look, that's a job all in itself. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so I do think it takes a village. That's where that whole thing comes in. You know what I'm saying? And I think that, um. I kind of wished I had that because like I did have my mother, but then again, it was off and on. And then, mm -hmm. you know, it, it was just, it, it was a lot of, a lot of turmoil. But if I would have had that, I'm like, wow, how would I be right now? Um, but I'm just glad that I could give it, you know what I'm saying? And yep. it's, it's about being vulnerable, right? Like you said, sharing yourself, you show mm -hmm. them that you're being vulnerable. They might have the courage to be vulnerable as well. And that takes you places. Vulnerability takes you everywhere. Yes. It takes you, it is a, it is a 
worldwide lifelong lesson that if you can just open yourself up and try your hardest not to be scarred too much by things that have happened to you and be, you know, be ready. Yeah. It, it can it can really be because it's life is a series of opportunities. It's a series of events. So if the last event really got you and now you're not vulnerable and you're closed off and you don't want to network and you don't want to talk to anybody. Well, when life happens again and that opportunity comes, you're going to miss it. And right. teaching right. vulnerability to young people, that's a big thing. I'm glad you said that because um, that's the key. Right, right. And you know, like um, everybody, like especially when you're young, I think it's important to think about the different way people learn, like the different ways people learn. Um, because, you know, some people like to read, some people like to use visuals or some people like to combine or whatever. And I also kind of like um, experiment you know, with that, you know, with the young people, because um, maybe they didn't know another way that really could get them engaged. And they, when they find it, it's really beautiful. Like, I just smile at them. Like, I, like, like I'm in awe, you know what I'm saying? Of how intelligent they are. Um, and just like, really, you know, I mean, they know what's up. The young people, yep. you can't front to them. That's another thing. You cannot go in, you know, go working with young people and be fronting. They know if you fronting, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, you know, and they don't have time for it. They ain't got no time for it because they don't <laughs> no care about that. You know, they don't care if you front and they're like, oh, nah. nah. You know, like adults be playing that game. The young people don't do that. <laughs> you know what I'm And saying? that's why you got to stay around them because that's some yes. genuine stuff. That's a yes. real feeling of like, so if you fake right now, when are you real? Right. You know? Exactly. You know, and that and, intergenerational thing. I like to work mm, with young people and I like to build with my elders too. And then I like to connect it. It's like that to me is my favorite thing. I love that. I love that. I have an affinity for, I call them old people, but I call, I say it in a cute way. But I just think that they're, our elders are so cute to me. Just on site, when I see them, I'm just like, like I, like I see a baby. And it's right. not in disrespect. It's not a disrespect. It's a blessing. Just like a newborn, the yep. blessing of aging is just like, oh, and then just like the conversations. I miss my grandparents. I don't have any of my grandparents anymore. And, you know, I take other people's grandparents. I will take yes. your grandma. Oh, my God. <laughs> Listen, I do the same. I do the same. I didn't have grandparents ever, mm -hmm. like, in my life. Mm -hmm. my, my father, like I said, I didn't know him, so I didn't get to meet them. They passed you know, um, and my mother's mother was a very strict, mean woman, um, mm. you know, and that just really, you know, I didn't have a grandmother in her. And then her father, you know, I ain't going to get into it, but I don't rock with him. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, so, yeah, other people's yep. grandfather. I'm like, hey, grandmother, all that. I'm like, listen, <laughs> and yep, they're happy to it. do that. Yeah, yeah, because um, that's another disconnect. That's a great point two i think that, that that's another layer that our generation to add to our engagements with young people is just that bridge between you know forget about us like look at your elders and look at what you can learn and like you said you didn't have a grandparent so it's kind of like they don't even some 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 young people I always say the the ones who act crazy are the minority i always say that um but some of them don't know what uh, what that love looks like, what that love feels like. And it feels like judgmental or, you know, like holier than thou or whatever. But like, that's what elders love feels like. Yes. You know, they got stories to tell and they got wisdom. I love it. I, I hang out with older people too, in general. Like my main, main circle is mm -hmm. like, like older women. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. That's who I like to be around. And I think that, you know, that just says a lot about my spirit, I guess. But um, you know what I wanted to ask you? Have you ever heard of, um, speaking of elders and stuff, have, have you ever heard of Charlotte Hill O'Neill? No. Her name is Mama C and she's Charlotte Hill O'Neill. You can find her on Facebook. Um, and she is such a beautiful elder that I love so much. 
And I mean, all you got to do is look into her stuff and you'll see why. But I've been to Venezuela at the same time mm. as her. Um, mm. I, I mean, Mama C loves hip hop too. You know, and okay. she, has quite, she has quite a story, okay? Former Black Panther from Kansas City, now in Tanzania, created her own village and everything oh. with her husband, Pete O'Neill. Oh. You know who I'm talking about? No, I don't know, but I'm okay, just like, okay. yeah, the yeah. Story I mean, alone. She plays these beautiful instruments. Um, one of them, the Nyatiti, which I love. Um, and like I said, she loves hip hop. So we have like freestyle together. I mean, this is just someone that I thought of, you know, speaking of elders. Um, and then Peggy Choi, man, she's, you know, a Korean, mm. a Korean um, key gong, you know, master choreographer, mm. martial arts, dance. I call her the um, the gangster goddess of dance. You know, and okay. these, these are the people that I look to, like who, when when I have, like, you know, when I need that kind of uplifting thing, mm -hmm. when I need to uplift my spirit and stuff, you know, um, those are the people I look to because just their energy is healing. Yeah, and and, it and it's because it's because they got there. Like, you know, it takes work to get to that place. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And I could just hear Mama C like, sister, it's gonna be all right. <laughs> mm, <laughs> you know, I love her already. Yes, I know you will too, for real. Definitely. I wrote both of them down. Definitely. So they both on Facebook too. I'm I'm gonna follow. I'm definitely gonna follow and get some of that love from them. I need it. I always Please need do. it. Please do. Please do. Tell tell them Nejma Nefertiti sent you, and they're gonna be like, "Oh yes." <laughs> oh yeah. For real. I sure will. I sure will. I need that mm -hmm. kind of love. Like you said, it's just it's a good, it's a good feeling to get wisdom from your elders, yeah. and especially out of love. You know, like. Yes. When they're giving it to you just out of love and they want you to be better. You know what I mean? Because right, everybody's right. not they a good person are. and they learn. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. You know, yeah, I mean, and, and they don't they don't really want nothing from you. It's like they actually just want to give to you and they want you to receive that. You know what I mean? And that's mm -hmm. a beautiful thing. And and then in turn, you could do that as well, because it's like all give and take, right? It's like, you know, mm -hmm. I also do that sometimes, you know what I'm saying? Um, to my people, my my um my brother my sister like you know and sometimes i need that so that's where i go i'm like oh man i need i need some of that uplifting mama c energy or i need to go take you know peggy Choi's um key gong class and just you know expand mm -hmm. my energy because a lot of yeah. this stuff you know a lot of this stuff minimizes our energy even digital um airwaves and stuff you know what i mean so it's important yep. to balance that so what do you do for self-care oh yeah that's a great question um and I was thinking about it because I'm gonna do something um, about that soon. So this is like right on time that you asked. Um, definitely one of them is kickboxing. I think that's my therapy. You know what I'm saying? Like it, it just, it lets out a lot of energy. It strengthens your body. It challenges you. You know, like you was talking about the six mile run. It's like that. I mean, afterwards, I feel like my ass is kicked. Okay. But I feel good. And I wanna <laughs> yes. do it again. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, I meditate a lot, you know what I mean? Any time and place mm -hmm. too, I don't care where it is. I meditate, I read, I love to read. That kind of takes my mind into, into another, a whole new storyline, you know what I mean? And mm -hmm. off of my own, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, definitely nature. Nature definitely uplifts me. Being near the water, being near trees, doing yeah. some hiking, you know, um, eating good food, eating healthy food. To me, that makes me feel strong. That makes me feel yeah. you know, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, yeah, I think those are the main things for me. Um, and then sometimes and that's I might, living. Yeah, like sometimes I might want to lose myself in a series or something. Like sometimes mm -hmm, we need mm -hmm. that. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Sometimes we need that. And it also inspires my creativity as well. So I love that. You know what I'm saying? Or Absolutely. just popping it up, chopping it up with my people, man. Go, you know, you know, now we're doing this social distance thing and stuff. So I haven't really been meeting with too many people, but I do mm -hmm. have a core group that we kind of meet up sometimes and we, you know, we do it safely or whatever. And that to me right there, just like being with your people, breaking bread. I mean, yeah. that's, the, oh, that right there. It's the but, ultimate feeling. It's the yes. ultimate recharge, recharge your battery. Yes. Um, you definitely hit on some spots with me when it comes to self-care. I mean, nature is number one. Nature is everything. everything. Oh my gosh. Nature, animals, and meditation. If yes. I could just be out in the open with 
you know, all creations uh, and meditate. I, I mean, that feeling is, and I also am one of those like plop down and meditate wherever you might be type of person because you know like it's for me that's what yep. i that's what i want to do it's what i need my soul asked for that so that's what and i'm about to do and you know you when know. to do it because sometimes if you put too much into it it's like you won't do it and i just learned that i could just be anywhere and, and kind of like figure it out you know what i'm saying and just disappear for a minute into the ethers like you know maybe travel <laughs> yep. a couple dimensions <laughs> seriously you know what i'm saying seriously and it's like I don't ha I don't have the capacity to ever explain anything, you know. Um, that was one of my um, newfound things last year was just the idea of saying no and not explaining. Mm. And I know that's something that we have been taught, especially as women, we've been taught to to do that. Yes. And I feel like no, my no is a no, you know, and. If an if a explanation is necessary, I'll give it to you. But right. otherwise, you know, respect it. And that's a part, that was a part of me doing, you know, practicing self care because the anxiety and the angst of being understood and being, you know, people knowing what they need to know. And it's like, it's nobody's business. I don't even know what I need to know about me. Why do I have to explain <laughs> anything yeah, yeah, to yeah. anyone else? No doubt. Um, no, it's important. It's important, like to be able to say no, and 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 you know, yeah, it does. Sometimes it's it's not easy, you know. So like, yeah, I know. I know, especially a lot of women, like we struggle with that. You know, what I'm saying, and I, I've had my own journey too with different things. Like, you know what? Nah, not right now. You know, what I'm saying, and yeah, I don't really have to explain. I just said no. That's it. You know, and if I want to explain, I will. But like. You know, I don't I don't owe that to anyone. You know what I'm saying? Like mm -hmm. I just owe it to myself to be like, look, I'm I'm good on that. You Absolutely. Know? In the industry too, I'm thinking you may have had some experiences where um, the industry can make you feel like your no is not a no. Or oh my goodness, yeah. Especially as women. Yes, absolutely. I mean, um, just like like growing up and stuff, especially like, you know, in my in like my early twenties. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, listen, you know, I've had certain deals that I've said no to that people mm -hmm. have harassed me with and like, you know, just A&R type stuff, you know, cause, and then things change and stuff. And then it's like, no to collaborations, no to like, I'm not going to do this performance unless, you know, I'm going to feel like I have what I need in this or that way. Like it's important. It's really important to do that. You're right. That's a real big part of self-care. Mm -hmm. It's like knowing knowing your boundaries, knowing what you can handle, knowing what you want and don't want. And, and you know, it's something to really figure out. It's something to definitely figure out. It takes it takes heartache, failure, oh. um, just like letdowns. You know, like if you pay attention to what you're doing and how you're responding to things, you'll see what energy you're putting out because your response is the next wave. You know what I mean? Right, and I, right, my right. waves, my waves were off for a minute. Like just, I don't know where I was, but um, being a part of the industry at a younger age, I sang um, and I still do it, but I do it just studio work, like demo work. But when I was out there, you know, trying to be a singer and I just did not agree with you know who I had to be and what I had to do to to get noticed, or right. um, you know what I was singing about. You know, mm. I thought I sang about love. I sang about like real love, not like you know R. Kelly love. Okay, right, right, right. yeah. <laughs> and yeah. <laughs> you know, it was kind of like you know, spice it up, write something else, and it's like that's not how I feel. Yeah. And I was young. I didn't even have the experiences that i have now i could sing a couple little risque songs today right, right, but like right, right. back then i wasn't i didn't feel comfortable doing it you know right. yeah and you know it's one thing to to kind of get uncomfortable and grow but it's another thing to be uncomfortable and have your creativity smashed you know what i'm saying like it's not always like there is a difference you know because i'm like i'm always saying like you know sometimes we got to get past that that being comfortable stage but not like that, you know, I don't mean not like, like that. that. You know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, not like that. Like if you're not comfortable in a way where you feel like uneasy and just that feeling like it's not right, 
then it's probably not right. You know what I'm saying? And like, you know, I went through the same thing. They wanted me to rap about whatever, you know, mm-hmm. they wanted me to rap about. And I'm like, what? They wanted me to, you know, wear these things. And I'm like, I, my body ain't even suited for that. Like, I'm not <laughs> even gonna right. feel comfortable. Like, what? You know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. just again and again, you know what I'm saying? So um, I totally get you on that. I totally get you on that. And you used the battle rap, right? Yes, I used to battle rap back in the day. That's kind of how I started on the corners, battle rapping a bunch of guys, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, I don't know. So what did Najma have on? What did Najma have on on the corner? Back then, I looked like a little tomboy. I mean, I kind of look kind of how I do now. T-shirt, hat, maybe, you know. Um, But back then, my hair was long, so it would be like in a really fly style, you know what Mm -hmm. I mean? Um big earrings, you know, kind of like some baggy jeans and a t-shirt with some Tims or something, you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Just, you know, that whole kind of thing, um, Adidas or whatever, you know, the track suits, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, bucket hats, you know. Yeah, yeah, hats or whatever. I feel the, the whole hip hop flair, you know what I mean? Um, yeah, but you know, I don't really do that anymore in this day and age because um, I don't it's like not the how- thing. Yeah, it's not the same. And it hasn't been the same for a long time. I mean, you know, back in the day, you could, at first, you could battle somebody and y'all could enjoy a drink or a conversation later. And it's, it's there's no love lost, you know what I'm saying? Um, but especially being a woman, I, I encountered a lot of hate, you know, a lot of threats, you know, um, a lot of- Cause like, you were good, like, right? Right, cause I was killing it. I was killing it and you know, you know, it is it is like something that you have to have like the heart for because you got to be ready to be put down by somebody. Um, and that's just not where I'm at at this point. You know what I mean? Like I'll talk shit yeah. in my raps, you know, still to this day, but I'm not going to pinpoint it on somebody. Um, and then my number one reason why I don't do it is because the brothers always want to pit me against other women and I'm just not doing that shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm nah. not going to be doing that right now. And I'm not, I'm not knocking people who do it. It is like a part of hip hop. It's been, mm-hmm. it's been, you know, a part of it for a long time, but I just, I'm just not there. You know what I'm saying? Anymore. Yeah. And I really want to uplift women. I mean, we, we have to put up with enough getting put down. I'm not going to do that shit. You know? Yeah. It comes a time when you just have to say no. Like, I, right. I, I don't exactly. do that no more. You know, people do that still no more. ask me, they still ask me and, 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 you know, they ask me if I'll do this or that, you know, um, regarding a certain like woman MC, I ain't even gonna say mm-hmm. no names. And I'd be like, mm-hmm. you know what? You got, I, I'm really not interested in that. And that's a no, you know, it's a no. a no, it's a no. <laughs> Are we good? Are we good here? Cause the answer is no. no. <laughs> <laughs> cool, cool. So there's a few things that I really, really wanted to talk about that I wrote down. Um, and it's about your music. So, two people that you worked with, I want to know what it's like. Okay. So, first, back in the day, I want to say maybe maybe two years ago or something like that, two or three years ago, um, I wrote a piece on Napoleon. And I was blogging. I had a relationship blog. And um, I used one of his songs to blog after because it brought up so many emotions for me. Mm-hmm. And, oh my God, what is the name of the song? I, I just see the video with him and the girl and she messed around on them and they were on the train. And oh, yeah, oh. He, has, he has such a large catalog. It's His hard catalog to is crazy. It's hard I know. to remember, but I know the video that you're talking about. You know I'm I just talking can't about. think of the title, but I know what you're talking about. The song is crazy, um, you know, the visuals are crazy, but the lyrics, the lyrics were amazing. And I found, I find him to be very consistent. He's yes. very consistently thoughtful. He's very consistently truthful. And he's very consistently creative. And he, he brings forth, he makes great videos. Like, that's a big thing for me. Like, if your videos are trash, you're trash to me. Because, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. you know what I mean? It's like long are the days of you know, what they, what the videos used to be and you can do whatever you want. You know what I'm saying? So he's always been super creative. What is it like being in the studio with him? Yeah. Um, 
it's seamless. You know, for me working with him, it was very natural. You know, I met him by the way, working with young people because we work with students in the Bronx and Brooklyn and you know, what you would consider your alternative schools and all that stuff. And um, you know, Yo SOS, like, you know, the Youth Saving Our Streets program. So I would see him around, um, you know, Rikers, we would, we would do like um, political development before we went in to doing stuff like that. Um, so I would see him at these meetings you know what I'm saying, all the time. And we would just show respect or whatever. And sometimes we would have ciphers. So we did get to see a little bit about like what we do. Um, mm -hmm. And eventually, and I was his fan. I was a fan of his music mm -hmm. and I still am obviously um, because just everything that you stated, I mean, he's an incredible artist, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. um, and a very creative person on the daily consistently, you know? Yeah. Um, so I was really inspired by him um, and you know, one day he just got at me. He said, listen, you want to um, do something together? You know, I've been thinking about it. I'm like, yeah, send me something. And our first track that we did, in Encrypted Wisdom, is still like a mm -hmm. favorite among the many yeah. tracks that we've done. Um, but, um, you know, I went to his home studio to record that verse. And I mean, like, mm -hmm. he got it done in no time and spent the rest of the time just like building. Back you know what I'm saying? Yep. And it was so yeah. natural. It was, it was fun. You know what I'm saying? It was respectful. You know what I mean? Um, which, yeah. which is always a big thing to me. Number one, I, you know, he is not a damn creep. Nothing like that. You know what I nope. mean? Nope. And, you know, there's a lot nope. of weirdos out there when they trying to do music with you and all that. And he is very professional. He's a friend, but he's very yes. professional. You know what yes, I'm saying? Yes, he so, is. So it was really fulfilling because, you know, for me, it was also healing, too, to work with a brother that, that works that way. I'm like, oh, yeah. wow, this is great. You know what I'm saying? And ever since we've been working, you know, and it's just like, he I love is it. that. He is definitely that because, you know, we had a, an exchange, a few exchanges um, when I was getting the blog together. And I always wanted to be sure that I put forth, you know, I don't do this podcast to get dudes. Like, right, right. I really love hip hop. If somebody's on my show, I didn't sleep with them. Right, right. Um, to get the interview, you know, I love yeah, hip hop yeah. and they know I love it. And, you know, they respect what I do just like I respect what they do. Um, and just talking to him, he was really professional. He got right back to me um, when I put it out. You know, he made sure that he shared it. And I just felt like, you know, if I had to work with anybody, I would want to work with him. Yes. Um, He's one of yeah. my favorite people to work with, man or woman. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's not even about that. I mean, he's definitely one of my favorite people because um, I like his timing, you know? Like, he has a different view of time, and I really mm. appreciate that, for real. Like, he's oh, not yeah. going to leave you waiting. He's not going to make you wait, you know? Um, you know, if, you're get, if he's on your project, he's going to get it done right away because he don't want to hold you up. And I'm going to tell you that if you make him wait, he going to move forward without you. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's and right. that, that he inspired me so much and all that because to see him doing this, I'm like, shit, I could do this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And and in my way, you know what I mean? And um, you know, he he always like he always brings that spirit with him. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah a, a beautiful person, beautiful person He's to a work good dude. with, and, you know, beautiful person to be a friend to and all that good stuff. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, shout out for sure to Napoleon. Yes, um, yes, he okay. is a legend. He is a legend for sure. Um, what are my favorite songs of yours? Mm -mm 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 -mm. It's so apropos right now. With everything going on in this world, right. especially with this police violence that is not new. We all right. know it's been going on in different countries, um, just the whole system of policing people is is very um, manipulative and controlling, but the system of policing and government in this country is just out of control. Yes. I mean, we and talk about systemic corruption, man. <laughs> it, is, it is just like you have to you have to have Iron Man level uh technology to to write down all the thoughts you have and figure out how to strategize around the foolery that has gone on in this country for almost right, 500 right. years but this song heavy 
killed Sandra Bland walked away whistling Then ruled it just suicide But I ain't listening Just another violent slaughter of the innocent It's what you call assassination Don't be ignorant Oh, okay. I thought you if was going in. Anybody's interested with La Bruja? Yes. So first off, she's dope. Oh my gosh, she's a Bronx living legend in her own. You know what I'm saying? She's been a mentor to me. I was a big fan of hers as well. And you know, it's crazy how we met too, the whole story. But you know, that's my sister, man. One of my best people. She was just here the other day. We was building on some beats and stuff. I mean, just like learn learn so much just watching her do her thing made me a better performer mm -hmm. you know what i mean like she and she has given me so many opportunities with you know working with the youth and different shows and you know it's just always i just you know when we get together we just be and that's just such a beautiful yeah. thing such a beautiful when did y'all write that song that was in 2015 we released it in 2015 okay. and actually break wow. me produced that and then um, there was a remix of it produced by a yes. band, Kike Cruz. Yeah. I love the remix too. Yes, yes. I love too. the remix too. But this song, it's like you wrote it a couple months ago. I, right? I mean, the, like, the history repeats itself. This stuff just won't stop. It does. It does. Are and you it, performing it, it, that with her around right now? Um, well, you know, not really right now. We were. And then sometimes when we do our own thing, we might do our different parts and stuff. Um, mm -hmm. We had a couple times that we got to actually perform it together. And you know what? It's funny that you brought this up and how it's still so relevant because um, she's talking about doing a video for that. And you just really inspiring me to be like, let's let's make this happen. You know what I'm saying? Yes, please. Yeah. Please. Because you two together both. Vocally, the cadence and the blend of your, you know, kind of a, and her heavy voice. I know. And right. Oh my God, that that combination is just like the perfect contrast. I love it. But the it. message is it. dope. The message is so clear. Um, and and it's funny because I find myself, you know, I think I can rap. I tell everybody that I interview that I think I can rap, but I know I can't rap. <laughs> But when when I when I try, it's usually to something that I would rap, like something right. that like touches me, and I find myself kind of acting it out when it's on because it's just like it's something I would think or say because it's like you know right. you walked off whistling after you did that to somebody. Okay, you know what I'm saying, and that was the thing. It's like you just like whistling, like you walking away, like it's nothing. That was the like whole nothing. thing. And that was her idea, actually. It was her concept. She comes up with great concepts, yo. Like, for real. Um, that was a dope concept. Yes, yes. And then, you know, yeah. we did our thing. And, you know, yeah, we gonna, we gonna have to do a video for that. Y'all gotta do a visual because that message right now, people want to, um, people need a theme, an anthem for that. Yes, I agree. We need an anthem for that. And, and you come from that era, you come from that era of hip hop where you use your platform to speak against injustices. And I feel like this song, although that's exactly what you did, you didn't lose any of, you know, the the the, the boom bap, the the, yeah. the element of just it being a dope song. Right, so, right, right. Yeah, that's so, you know. That. I, I love the challenge of all that, you know what I'm saying? And you know what's funny is that you made me think of something because when you said like, you like to rap stuff that you would say or that you feel in and you act it out and stuff, that's like kind of how I started. I was rapping other people's stuff and mm -hmm. really like getting into it, you know? And my friends yeah. back in the day, they were like, yo, you got a delivery. Maybe you should do your own, you know? Cause I was just writing poetry back then. Cause my mother was mm -hmm. a poet. So like I was inspired by her and I was writing her letters in prison. She would send me poetry Aww. and stuff, you know what I mean? And and back in the day they used to allow you to um to make tapes and send them tapes and stuff. Like it was crazy, yeah. That that was wow. Bad. But you know, like um she brought a lot of that political kind of message home. Yeah. Just being in and out and also mainly because, you know, where where she went to prison um in Clinton, New Jersey was the same prison that Asada Shakur was liberated from. So mm, I, mm. I grew up with her stories. Like Asada Shakur is my spiritual mother. 
for real. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Yes, yes. yes. So that's kind of how it started. And I was like, okay, let me um, start to like put some of this poetry to beats. And I would like, um, you know, back in the day, they used to do this more where like there was a project and they would give you a little section of an instrumental on a song. And I would would keep rewinding it, rewinding it. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. For real. Well, I mean, this is rhythmic poetry. You know, that's what hip hop is. And it's and it's um it's definitely something where we communicate. I mean, we really communicate through hip hop. Yes. As much as and I think I love the young people, I love their music. I'm not a hater. I'm not a hater. Because if it gets me close to you, I'm listening to it. How about that? Right, right. But I also see how it frustrates other people who have been listening to hip hop since its inception because we really touted our vocabulary. Like that yes. was something that we were bragging about was right. was our vocabulary and how we, you know, flip the metaphor and, you know, our wordplay. And yes. I think that's where the frustration kind of comes in when, you know, a whole eight bars is I walk in the trap, trap, the trap, the trap. That's right, that. Right. Although you might bounce a little bit to it, you know, because a drum is a drum is a drum, you right. know. And I'm melanated. I can't help it. Right, right, right. But you know, we kind of are. We were kind of raised on a different kind of message yes. overall. Yes, and and message is the key. Like there, there's really not always a message, especially in the industry hip hop. Mm-hmm. I mean, because there's a lot of hip hop with a message. You just gotta find it. It's like when people say, "Where's all the women MCs?" I mean, I got a long list of them. You know what I'm saying? That you know that I listen to, and I keep that list, and I keep adding to it because I really, I really care when people ask me that question. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I'm not about to be like getting stuck. I know plenty of them. You know what I mean? And like, I even made mm-hmm. a playlist on Spotify for fun with so many different women MCs. It's called um, The House of Flying Daggers with a Z at Oh, shit. End. Yeah, check that out. It's on my Spotify page under my artist playlist and stuff. Um, oh, I need that. But yeah, and you know, I continue to add to that. Um, but you know, like, I do I do believe in hip hop, like, like as, as it never dies, it also evolves. And you know, maybe, maybe that music is, is for some people or sometimes. You know what I'm saying? But I do get what you're saying because, you know, it's like, I don't even like to be called a rapper. Like, I'm a lyricist. I'm a wordsmith, you know? Like, mm-hmm. you know, um, yes, I rap and everything, but like, it's really bigger than that. And, you know, yeah. it was always about coming from a real place for one, either what you're going through or what you really see around you. I mean, you know, it came from nothing, like, you know, and it really has evolved to what it is. Um, So I'm not a hater either, but you know, sometimes I, I do, I get it, what, why people are, are a little bit like, well, damn, you know, where's the message? Um, right. So also that's another challenge that I've been um, kind of like trying to do recently is like take some of those beats and, and, and still drop a message on it. You know, a mm-hmm. message that you can dance to. You know, because mm-hmm. I, like, I like to make people dance. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I really do. It's, that's another healing thing, by the way, that I love to do. Every week since this quarantine started, I meet uh-huh. with my homegirls and we have a virtual dance party. All the little boxes there. We share music and we dance. And I mean, all night long. Everybody has I love a love or, or whatever. Yes. I love y'all. You know what I'm saying? Like, and it really <laughs> does. I look forward to it because it really does just like free your spirit. I mean, yes. you know, dancing is everything, man. Dancing is everything. Is. We, for- we forget about that. Like we forget about the other elements of hip hop. You know what I'm saying? Oh, dancing say it. is a huge element. Graffiti, the DJ, you know, the beatboxing, the knowledge. Don't forget, you know, the 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 street, the street knowledge. You know, the the street mm-hmm. wear. Absolutely, know, absolutely. It is truly a culture that has raised millions, millions of us, and yeah. it's very, very comforting and challenging, and young, right. and vibrant. And so, you know, it's, it's, it's open and it's open to everybody. That's the beautiful mm-hmm. thing all over the world. It don't matter who you mm-hmm. are. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, you know, I do think it's important to know where it comes from though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think it's important. It's really, that's what I teach my youth too. I, I, I you know, if I'm going to talk about hip hop, we talk about what it comes from. 
You know, um, yeah. I made this cool timeline actually, you know what I'm saying, that I play for them. And okay. they really, they really love it. It's very engaging. It goes all the way from like the eighties all the way till now. And it's like, well, kind of like be in your class. look, I could send that to you for fun. You know what I'm saying? I just just to check it out. It's about 15 minutes. You know, yeah, let me see that. I'm gonna send it to you. For sure. I'm gonna I'm gonna note that because I I be taking notes. I you know, it's a lot. It's going definitely on. important to um, pay respect um, to the to the art form, to the craft, to the culture, and all of its pioneers. They're not old. They're not outdated. They're not old school. They're most of them here, alive, well. Yep. Some of them have gone on, but their legacy is what hip hop, you know, came from. Yep. So, and you know, we got to respect that. We got to respect that. To. But at the same time, I do think sometimes they need to open the doors a little more, especially the women. That's all I'm going to say, because it do be kind of a boys club. <laughs> Man, listen, it is a boys club. It yeah. is a boys club. Yeah. And you know what? It's so unfortunate. And I um like I don't do the whole Fem C thing and female rapper Me and too. stuff. It's like I mean, I maybe as a point of reference, like if I say Nejma, and they're like, Well, I never heard of him. No, it's a she's a female. Like it's a yes. female MC. Right. Like, you right. know, a MC is an MC. I've heard plenty of MCs who are female who would burn you, you know, you can't run. She can, yep. Yep. you know, I'm so, so glad you said that. Be, like, come on. I'm so glad you Plenty. said that because like, if you're dope, you're dope. And that's exactly how I treat it. Cause back in the day I did use words like that, but I grew in a way where I'm like, you know what? I'm an MC period, you know, period. And like, you know, if like you said, if, if I have to, I'm like, oh, she's a woman. She's, you know, whatever. Yeah. But like, you know, MC period. You dope, you dope. You not, you not. You not, you not. <laughs> yeah. So, so I my love final your spirit. Song. I love your spirit. I love you back. I love <laughs> you back. I'm just excited about just getting to know you better and letting everyone else get a little glimpse of who you are. And this final song that I wanted to ask about, it's written. Always knew the world was mine. I will win. It's written in my bloodline. Straight out the gutter. I'm not only God, there is no other. And I'm not into you. I'm focused on my bread and butter. Don't get it twisted. I'll make sure that I avenge my mother. It's like Colombian a bitch and we will get you covered. I make magic with my words so your days are numbered. Daughter of the desert, bringer of the thunder. I'm a wonder, not surprised. Haters want to tear my world asunder ever since I came out the womb. Oh, yeah. That's, that's a dear so, my heart. That song... Um, tell everybody your, your, I want to know where that came from, what inspired that song. That's funny. Cause both of those are off of my, one of the first projects I did when I came back to New York, you know, when I came back home, um, both, you know, all, both of those from Breakbeat Lou and then the, bro the brother who did the remix Kike Cruz, mm -hmm. cause it was a whole, the whole thing was remixed, but, um, mm -hmm. it's written, you know, it was about, so first of all, in Ode to the Streets, number one, because I start out by saying straight out the gutter, I'm la unica, there is no other. And I'm not into you, I'm focused on my bread and butter. Don't get it twisted. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I'm yes. just talking that shit, you know? Yes. And, um, sometimes I think, you know, it's important for a woman to go ahead and talk that shit because dudes do it all the time, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, I thought a little bit about Nas with the It's Written thing because mm -hmm. I was always inspired by that as well. Um, and it was kind of like, it was like my tribute to hip hop and where I came from and where it took me, you know? And even yeah. then, even then I was not going by Nejma Nefertiti yet. I was going by Nejma Shea, you know what I'm saying? Shea. Yes, because, well, that's kind of a, a little bit of a long story, but people used to say I was smooth like Shea butter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, what you, I'm are, you, you know, are, so, yeah, so I, I went by that for a really long time, um, even during that time when I released that record. Um, so, you know, yeah, it was just about like 
you know, I was just, I was kind of like just stepping in. I was just stepping into this scene out here because I hadn't been here for a while. You know, I went, I went traveling and stuff for a while. I was seeing different parts of the country, you know, having other experiences and stuff. And once I was finally ready to come back to New York, you know, um, and I did that project, I had some time to sit and reflect on mm -hmm. everything that I had been through, you know, and I didn't get to mm -hmm. do that. You know, I laughed, I cried. You know, at certain times, I even, you know, was really hard on myself um, and then learned, hey, you know what? It happens to the best of us. You know yep. what I'm saying? It happens That's to it. the best of us. Um, so that was, that was like my, almost like my rebirth. You know what I'm saying? And like basically being like, look, you know, I'm bringing this energy, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Um, you know, and this is, this is, this is where I come from. This is where I got it from yeah you know and so it was like the heart of like everything that had brought me to where i was at that point super empowering is a definitely a song that makes you like celebrate your journey thank you so much i appreciate yeah. that because i wasn't expecting you to bring up you know that one i was like what's she gonna say and i was not guessing that and i'm like wow i gotta listen to that again it's been a while it's been a you while. know, it's, if it's good, it's good. You know, word, I, word. I, I mean, hey, you know, music is timeless, right? That's right. You know what I'm saying? That's right. So, so what's happening in your world now? Like, what is what is in rotation for you now? What what's your newest release and what's coming? Okay, so um, well, you know, Napoleon's always always releasing new stuff, so I'm always listening to his projects. I love his mm -hmm. his stuff. You know what I'm saying? You could just leave it on and let it rock. Um, yep. I I love Azalea Banks. You know, she she released a couple of new things recently. I, I just love her style. I would love to collab with her. You know what I'm saying? I've been Who was that? Azalea Banks. Oh, okay. Gotta, okay. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Okay, Azalea I missed it. Banks. Um, you know, um, who else am I listening to? Um, Who's in the rotation? This brother named Mons, M-O-N-S. He has a very different style. It's like, um, hmm. he raps in Arabic, but I love his okay. beat and I love his voice. You know what okay. I'm saying? Because you know something, another thing about hip hop and being an MC is like, you used to have to have like a, a like a nice voice. Like, yep. like a voice that like, some of this stuff, I'm like, this shit sound like, like you screeching and crying, bro. Yeah. <laughs> like I can't. I can't. Oh, they all sound like this. They have the same effect on them. So I don't know, like, who is who. Right, right, right. You know. Um, yeah. Chain Noir. I just, I've been listening oh, to yeah. her. Chain Noir. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I was I was recently introduced a um, few months ago to Ghetto Queen. She also raps in Arabic and English. Mm. She's from Egypt. Um, she's not on, I don't know. I couldn't find her on Spotify, but she's definitely on the on the web. She's on social media. Um, but okay. very strong and powerful. Um, Sampa the Great, you know Sampa mm. the Great. Nope. Very dope. Star got new stuff out. Shout out to Star. She better, she better stop playing. Star, she's dope. I mean, I seen, I seen you interviewed her too. Very, oh man, like she been doing her damn thing. She always I'm has. I'm so been, happy she's back. Yes, she, she, she's on the top charts with her new um track with with, yes. uh, with DJ Bizarro right now, man. Yeah, coming that out with a new video. Nothing. I'm looking forward to her video too. Mm -hmm. For real. Um, yeah. So you know, I'm always I'm always trying to trying to get into the into the women MCs and what they're doing out there. Um, as far as myself, you know, I got um, so I have a couple solo projects in the works. One of them, I'm complete on my part. I'm just waiting on the producer. Okay. Um, shout out to Voltage Controller, um, Shiro Fujioka. He's out of Los Angeles. You know, mm. he speaks in frequencies. Okay, this brother, like, you know, he hasn't even produced a hip hop um, album in a while, but he does sound work. And Ooh. his beats, his beats are very, like, spiritual to me. But it still mm. has that boom bat element. But then it yeah, has yeah, yeah. frequencies that's nothing like anything I've ever Ooh. heard. I've ever heard. I'm yeah. ready. I'm ready so for that. So that's going to be that's going to be an EP. Okay. Um then I have I have a solo project coming out and it's 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 very collaborative because and this is just four tracks. It's a four track EP. 
a brother from Egypt, Muhammad Malek, sent me these four beats. And I was like, these is hot. Let's do this project. Mm -hmm. And um, he also drew something of me and I'm making a sticker of it. I'm so excited. I'm going to finally have some stickers. I always wanted stickers and I, I love stickers. Anybody mm, know yeah, I that? Yeah. So I got that coming. But um, and then so and then the person who's going to mix and master it, because I do mix and master. Um, I went to school for that and stuff. I do that. But I don't yeah, always. Man. Yeah. Like, I don't always want to do every single task yeah. or something. Mm -hmm. So with this, I'm giving this young brother, um, very young brother, but very talented, also from Egypt, Mr. Buddha. We just released a track called um, We Don't Pray for Enemies actually mm. that, just, that just came out um and i love it so much and he did so oh, much yeah it's it's out there it's out there M me and mr buddha he did such a great job with the sound on that mm -hmm. that and then he asked me you know sis if you find any opportunities i said well how about you mix and ma master this project for me and so i put him on that you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. Kick the show, you know what I mean? yeah that's how it go and like that's right um, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. And then also a project, a project with Napoleon the Legend. We've been working on that, and we have a nice little body of work accumulating. Mm, yeah. Okay. You know, you got I mean, some treats. Look, I got some treats coming out. Um, also, other like you know collaborations here and there that um, that are coming out soon. Some collabs with Bizarro um, for Dysfunctional okay. Family on his new joint. Um, shout out to him. I just seen him the other day. He gave me a great couple opportunities too man really really dope brothers yeah, for real. Dope. i love it yes i, I love yeah. shout out to the dope brothers that really be holding a sister up not down you know what i'm saying mm. um you know and then other than that um i've been oh the perfumery i'm finally gonna launch mm, my perfumery. that's right um that's also another like very healing thing to me you know what i'm saying that really has healed me is blending and making perfumes. I studied for years before I started to do it myself. And um, I go by Temple of Nez, and I have like five or six scents um, getting ready to launch. And I also got the beard oil for the brothers. Hey, y'all heard that. Got the beard oil. The beard's yeah. popping. You know what I'm saying? Um, so just being creative outside of the music too has really um, mm -hmm. um, like, it, it's really skyrocketed during this quarantine because I've had the time. You know what I'm saying? I've been organizing. Yep. I've been getting my, my online presence together, but also saving things so that if this didn't exist, I still have this documented. I mean, I don't think we think about that enough. Like, what if this digital thing just disappeared? Like, what would happen to all those pictures, those songs? Yes. You know what I mean? Yes. Um, and you know, I got my sneaker out. I released two versions yes. of the sneaker. Yeah, mm -hmm. I got. I'm doing my little streetwear thing. I got um a T-shirt in the making. You know what I'm saying? I love those sneaks. I need some. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, I gotta buy yes. some. Thank you so much. I got the black and gold and the all black. Yeah, it, it, and it's with a small family in Italy, so it's been a real a real treasure, kind of working with this this small family. You know, not this big corporate thing. And I ain't knocking nobody, but my style. I just like to keep it a little independent. You know, and some yeah. more independent you know, people, you know, even this right here, this is classic material I'm wearing right now. Oh, gotta love them. You know what I'm classic material. That's with the, the classic Buddha, material. The Salam apparel on the, on the mm -hmm. head. You know, all independent people. I love it. I yeah. love it. Well, you know what? <sighs> One thought with the perfume, is, is this going to be brick and mortar or just online? both like right now well isn't there's not i'm not gonna have like an like an actual store you know what i'm saying okay yeah okay it's, it's basically like word word of mouth or online mm -hmm. and so far i've only done everything like just meeting people and usually okay. usually they'll be like hey you smell good i like well you know what is that i'll be like oh i made it and then and then they're like oh well and then it, from there you know what i'm saying sometimes they'll get some i got a few clients you know I'm going to grab, I need to grab all of the scent. You know, I need a little, little sampler. I'm going to get all of them yes. so I can, I'm gonna have a you know. Kit. I'm going to have a sample kit that you yeah. can grab. Yep. That's always my, you know, that's actually what I was waiting for because I needed these special little corks. Because, you know, mm -hmm. I took a long time to find out how to package it the way I want it. You know, the Ooh, I can't wait. All of it. Yeah. So I'm going to have like a little tin with these little cute little bottles with these, you know, cosmetic mm. kind of corks. 
and you could sample everything and, and find out what you like. You know yes, what I'm saying? I'm into all of that. I'm into yes. it all. I need and, you know, that. It's, I'm great, it's great, great for meditation too. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. I'm all about aromatherapy, about smells, about the healing powers of the oils and just like, I'm one of those, okay? Yeah, for everybody yeah, watching. Yeah. I'm one of those, okay? Sure. Yep, like I got it. you. I got, got you. you. I, got you. <laughs> I can't wait. And then the sneaker, what's the line called? Oh, it's called Liberté. And Liberté. Um, it kind of, yeah, Liberté. It's L-I-B-E-R-T-E -E with a little, you know, thing mm -hmm. to kind of give it the the sound. But um, uh -huh. it, it basically represents freedom, but specifically freedom to be to walk in your in your purpose you know what i'm saying so it's mm, all mm. about kind of like walking in your purpose and and you know i i really kind of like i i envision like just artists and revolutionaries and people like wearing my, my sneaker and yes. stuff and that's actually that's actually what's happening so it's it's slowly you know slowly it's been happening but um it's out there permanently now and so anybody could get them you know, and I'm I got, I got discounts. I got discounts. I need my black and gold. I need my black and gold. Okay. Yeah, I got the black and gold. I got it. That's that's the pair I, I got it. too. You are an amazing spirit. You're awesome. I am oh, so happy so I got a chance to speak with you, and you know, do my part in spreading the word about all of the wonderful things that you do. And you are such an asset to hip hop. You are an asset to women everywhere and men everywhere. Yes. Look at this positive, beautiful, and compassionate person in front of you. And understand that all, all of that translates into her music. All of it. All the power, all of it's in the music. So if you are looking for an artist that you can cling to, not only um, the audio, you know, but spiritually, just like cling to the message. Um, you gotta look up Nejma Nefertiti. I'm gonna make sure I flood my page with all of her stuff and let's get the supporting. Let's get the supporting. I appreciate you, Queen. I really Thank do. Thank you so, so much. This was such a dope conversation. This gave me energy, you know what I'm saying? And that's like, that's always a beautiful thing. And I really am grateful. I'm so grateful. Thank you. I really appreciate it. No doubt, no doubt. So make sure you follow Nejma. All of her social media information is right here on the screen. Make sure you continue to share the word about Ladies Love Hip Hop. I'm here. I'm around. I'm always looking for some of my favorites to sit down, talk to, and get to know. Please, 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 to all of you listening, be safe, be careful, open your eyes, open your mind, keep it hip hop. Love you so much. See ya. Ladies love hip hop.